Welcome to Uncle Connection. I'm Tim Burns, and we're here at Pasquale's in Royal Oak today. I'm pleased to be joined by Desiree Devalia. Thanks for being on the show today, Desiree. Thanks for having me. Excited well, to con- be here. Congratulations on your uh, great race at the Boston Marathon. Uh, second place, almost first, <laughs> but most importantly, the fastest time by a, a woman runner, uh, for American woman runner in the history of the race. Congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate it. And uh, we're proud that uh, you're an Oakland County resident, <laughs> and uh, you live in Rochester Hills. I do. It's um, it's been good to me. So. Excited to be here. And uh, what brought you to Michigan? Um, I'm actually a part of the Hanson's Brooks Distance Project. It's a post-collegiate team that's run out of uh, Rochester and basically takes average to decent um, college runners and gives them the opportunity to run after college to find out how good they can be. And I've uh, had a lot of success there and, and do I really enjoy the program. So I think okay. I'll be sticking around a while. And uh, you actually have gone from being an amateur in college to you're now considered a professional athlete? Yep, yeah. Um, college running is all NCAA and, you know, um, going through that system. And then once you get out, you can look around for professional options. And so Hanson's was a great fit. Okay, and how has that transition been in uh, your career so far? Um, it's, it's always a little difficult just um, once you step out of the NCAA system, the competition is a whole new level so um, I've been fortunate that the program actually allows you to develop uh, one step at a time and you don't have to be ready to compete with the best in the world right away you can kind of take the the baby steps needed to get there and bridge the gap Um, and so I'm fortunate to have the the project to to be a part of and and it's allowed me to you know gradually move into that role. But in talking about best in the world you're quickly getting up there yourself. (laughs) Well it working in that direction, so. Now, uh, Boston Marathon time, uh, again, you were the uh, fastest American woman to, to run that race, and uh, that time actually was the uh, third fastest uh, time for an American uh, woman to ever run a marathon, is that correct? Almost. It's a little tricky. It's, uh, I think I'm the third fastest American woman ever, or the two ahead of me have run multiple times faster than myself. So uh, it gets okay. a little dicey, but pretty close. But you're right up there. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And if you don't mind asking, how old are you? I'm um, 27 right So now. you're still like really uh, early in the uh, stages of running, aren't you? I hear a lot of the marathon runners are uh, older in their 30s. Yeah, um, usually you peak around your mid-30s, early 30s. So, mm-hmm. you know, if I can remain healthy and, and keep improving, I think I, I'll have a decent future. So uh, let's talk a little bit about the uh, the Boston Marathon race there. What was your strategy going into the to the to marathon? Um, heading in, I knew what kind of time I could be shooting for and what kind of time generally wins that race. Um, mm-hmm. And so basically, I had my own race plan regardless of what what uh, was done by anybody else in the field. And that was just to go click off 5:30 per mile for you know the first 20 miles, and then um, you know I thought that that would land me right around the top five group at mile 20 and then from there you race in and right. it's kind of as hard as you can so right. well I'm sure a lot of people in the audience <laughs> out there are probably going uh, five minute 30 mile pace per mile for the first 20 miles and then you pick it up <laughs> yeah yeah it's uh, so. I, well I did the same thing I was like oh that's that's pretty quick but you know I so when you get to uh, you know 26 mile mark and you're running a round of 530 or under uh, uh, pace there I mean are you just kind of running on, on uh, hope or how is that is it starting to hurt or I mean oh like yeah a- it's I mean when you get towards the end I, I was lucky because the the crowd out in Boston was just incredible I mean and so everyone's so excited and you kind of are able to use that energy and emotion from the crowd and that that helps you a lot and then you know it's just um, how bad you want it at that point you know so Right. It, you think about all the training you've done, all the miles you've put in, and it's it's right. pretty easy to get yourself going. Well, I you know I probably sure a lot of the people who are out there are casually jogging who are thinking a 10 minute, 15 minute mile is pretty good. Thinking about running 26 miles <laughs> at five minutes and 30 second pace per mile, uh, I give you a lot of credit. You were really a, a tremendous athlete to be able to do that. Well, thank you. It doesn't happen overnight. It's a lot of hard work. So. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so talking about the race, you, you were with the pack for a good portion of it, and then you actually were leading near the end. Um, and then just at the finish line, it looks like you, uh, you came about two seconds short. <laughs> what happened there? Yeah, it was um, a lot of back and forth surging and, you know, 
I was just trying to keep the pace really hard so that when it came down to the last straightaway, hopefully everyone would have dead legs and mine might be might be just a little fresher. Mm -hmm. But uh, that was not the case. Um, right. So you so came in second place by just two seconds. Just two seconds. Uh, that's that's so. a, a heartbreaker there, but it's still <laughs> a lot to be proud of by yes. having that great time and just being able to accomplish a feat at that uh, level of competition. I give you a lot of a lot of credit. Thank you. So in regards to the Boston Marathon, why is that race so special compared to say you know you hear about people running the Detroit Free Press Marathon or the Cincinnati Flying Pigs or mm -hmm. Marathon? What, what what's special about the Boston Marathon? Um, I mean I think all big city marathons are really exciting and they're you know a lot of fun and everything. But when you look at Boston, this was the 115th year of the Boston Marathon. There's so much history on the course and. You know, so many great races have happened there, and you can look back at you know some of the big names in the sport, and they've raced there, and um, just to be a part of that history on mm -hmm. that one day is that's really exciting, and I think that in itself is what kind of sets Boston apart. Right now, after Boston, um, I know we have some Olympics coming up in London next year. Uh, any plans for that? Um, the next marathon for me will be the Olympic Trials in January, and uh, it's. One day, all the Americans line up, and then mm -hmm. they take whoever finishes first, second, and third. So that will be um, the big race for me, and hopefully I'll put myself in that top three spot. Okay. Now, after you know, you're doing so well at Boston and having such a great time, just not for that race, but in the history of, of women runners in the country, um, does that put any extra pressure or burden on you, you think, in the trial, or is that actually giving you a little bit of enthusiasm that you're going to do but maybe better than you originally might have thought? Um, I think it puts a little target on my back, but I, I think if you're a, a target that's moving away in the opposite direction real fast, um, then you're probably going to be okay, you know. Uh, so it's it's a, not a horrible spot to be in. <laughs> okay. Now, training in Michigan and specifically here in Oakland County, where are some of the places that you like to run? Uh, it's great training out here. We actually are on the Paint Creek Trail quite often, and you can head down that way and get on some dirt roads quite easily. Um, we did a lot of stuff out in Lake Orion. Um, some of the hilly roads out there were, were perfect for Boston and everything's okay. dirt, so it's great. Okay. And um, in addition to marathon, are there other races that you're involved with? Yeah, I um, will do track stuff, shorter stuff, uh, 3,000 meters all the way up to marathon, but the next big thing will be a 10K on the track, so. Okay. And. Um, did you mention that uh, earlier before the show started that uh, there's a race in Korea coming up? Possibly. So uh, there's uh, world championships are in Korea this year, and if you finish top three at the USA Track Nationals, you, you get selected for that team. So that'll be the, the big goal for the next couple okay. months here. And for races like that, um, do you have to qualify based on time, or how, do you, how are you eligible to get to those upper-level competitions to compete? Uh, it's a lot like um, a mini Olympic trials, I guess. If you're top three at that race, and um, you usually will get selected for that that spot on the world championship team. So okay, so tell us a little bit, just briefly, about how did you actually get started with running? Uh, I started as a soccer player actually when I was real young. I'm probably like five years old before, you okay. know, I was doing much else, and then. Um, I, that just kind of naturally progressed to running track, and, and I've had had some success there, and decided to keep pursuing it in you know high school and college, and okay. now now. <laughs> well, you're doing great. Keep it going, and uh, we're proud of here, proud of you here at uh, in the community, and uh, want to see you uh, running in the uh, streets of London in 2012. Thank you very much.